Hello everybody, this is Joshua Dearden, as you all know. I'm back for another video. Hello everybody, this is Joshua Dearden, as you all know. I'm back for Okay, so my experience with Western Express orientation has not been the best. It hasn't been a positive one, but it hasn't been all sad, as, sad faces. It also hasn't been a complete death. Before I came to Western Express, I literally lost everything. My home, my 2018 Dodge Journey, that I was making $600 a month in payments on. My 2003 Dodge Ram 1500 that I spent three years <coughs> paying off. I'm close to losing that. Due to lost all, everything I had due to issues at home and my relationship with my ex, which turned into me spending everything I had to try and satisfy her needs. And in the end, I kept sacrificing bills to satisfy her. It started out small. I'd buy her a vape juice and take her out to eat, buying clothes, etc. In the end, my only concern was not losing her. I put my life and my responsibilities on the back burner because I lost myself. I was trying to hold on to someone I loved that didn't necessarily love me the way I loved her. I was trying to hold on to something that wasn't meant to be held on to. So my 2018 Dodge Journey got repoed. I spent three years of my hard-earned money paying off my 2003 Dodge Ram 1500. I loved that truck and this issue made me desperate. So desperate that I was dumb enough to get a title loan on my truck for $2,000. I'm currently fighting to get the money to save my 2003 Dodge Ram 1500 from being taken away from me because, well, uh, I had no, I had lost my job. I was going to court for eight months for my ex who beat the living hell out of me, who I stood there taking and never raised my fist to. And money was hard for me. So I'm back here at Western Express again, trying to finish my training. Wow. The training. So that's horse of a completely different color. I'll come back to that. But I'm here so I make the money necessary to save my truck and save my life because I have nothing. All I have is my family and my friends. I have no home, nothing. I missed the first payment on the title loan. I missed all the payments on the title loan. I'm way behind. I need that 2000 possibly more to save my truck and I'm working on getting this taken care of and this orientation and training is strange and a very long process. But 
I'll get into why I have six trainers so far and going on to my seventh in my next video. But what can you expect when you come to work for Western Express? Well, I'll be glad to show you. You'll start with your recruiters promise you the best they can. Some will even lie to you to get there. My recruiter, however, was awesome. His name is Logan Adams. This guy has not only been nothing but honest, but he's also stuck his neck out for me three times now to keep me here with Western Express. He's been, li he's listened to everything I've had to say. He stood up for me, he's backed me up. He wants me here. He doesn't want me to quit. I don't have plans to quit, but he agrees that the stuff I'm going through is not, it's not fair. It's not right and I shouldn't have to deal with that. So he stuck his neck out for me and he's a really good guy and he's a good recruiter. So if I would, I'm sure all recruiters are out here are good, but he's mine so he's good. But I've dealt with recruiters in the past that lied. However, every recruiter I've spoken to here at Western has not lied a bit. They're, they're really good. But Logan Adams is by far, my, he's my recruiter, but he's a really good recruiter and a good guy. But I will start fresh and tell you, when I came here to Western Express, I had literally lost everything. My life was destroyed by a woman I loved. She took herself out of the equation because she loved the attention from multiple men. So my world was over. I was homeless and broke, so I decided to go trucking. I literally had zero options, so trucking is my way to save my life and get back on track. So orientation was interesting for many reasons, but I'll go through it. The first thing you'll do when you arrive is do your physical and drug screen. You'll pee in a cup and then send it, they'll send it off to a lab which takes two to three days for drug screen results to come back, which is fine because you have two to three days of orientation anyways, and if you're going flatbed with Western Express, you'll have an additional three days of load securement. Make sure that when you come to Western Express, you pack light. Don't make the same mistake I made packing full suitcase because you'll have to lug it around back and forth um, when waiting for your trainer and stuff, it's it's a hassle. So pack as light as possible. Um, when you come to Western for orientation and training, only pack enough clothes for seven days or less would be better if you can deal with doing laundry as often as possible. Speaking from experience, trust me. Uh, speaking of laundry, the benefit is the seating trailer at the main terminal will provide you with laundry soap and a card that has two washers and two dries on it which is basically free laundry for you so you don't have to pay for it but if you would rather do it here at the hotel or next door um, they do have laundry here at the hotel and next door they're all within walking distance. The laundry here and the laundry next door is all within walking distance while you're here for orientation and training. Be prepared to deal with drivers from all walks of life. Drivers that have attitudes, drivers that know it all, and drivers who believe they actually have something to learn here. Those are the type of drivers I respect the most. The ones that are easy to talk to and are willing to teach and willing to learn and not attack people who ask questions. Those are the people I respect the most. With that being said, when you arrive to Nashville, Tennessee, whether it be by Greyhound bus or airplane, you'll need to call the shuttle van, which will be in the welcome email your recruiter sent you an email. The Western Express shuttle will show up and pick you up, take you to Hallmark Inn, where you'll check in and you'll be You'll put your bags in the room. Uh, you'll want to shower, get some sleep, and wake up at 5 a.m. in the morning and get dressed for the day. 
You'll go down to the lobby, eat breakfast, which trust me, you definitely want to take advantage of because you'll have a long day ahead of you and won't be getting back to the hotel until around 5 p.m. every day. Then the bus will show up at 5.30 a.m. and then again at 6 a.m. And trust me, you don't want to miss both of them as the shuttle van is very busy because going back and forth to the Greyhound bus station, the main terminal, and to the training center here in Nashville. Trust me, the bus will be crowded. You'll need your CDL and medical card if you have it. And if you need a new one, that's what the physical is good for. They'll give you a brand new medical card. Every person that comes to Western Training Center gives each person a colored wristband based on some weird grouping system for day one orientation. Once you get to the training center, you'll take your drug screen and physical if needed. Then you'll be asked if you, you'll be asked to do computer assignments, fill out forms, watch safety videos, and around noon or so you'll eat lunch. Then continue the day one. Around 3 p.m. you'll be done for the day one orientation and then might give you some McDonald's cards to buy food at McDonald's with him which is in locking distance of the Hallmark or they will tell you food starts at 5 p.m. at the seat at the um, load skirmish trailer so you can choose to get free food at 5 or you can get the shuttle early and go back to the hotel shower eat and eat at your own expense and get some sleep early rather than having to deal with 100 drivers at once in a bus. A little exaggerated, but trust me, it's crowded. At 5 p.m. after dinner has been served, food is appreciated. It's not terrible, but I hate onions and they tend to put onions on literally everything. They serve like their beef stroganoff. Choosers when you're starving, which I'm always starving, so I'm kind of a fat man. So you eat, and then you take your journey on the bus to the hotel from the training center and get you some sleep and at the end of the night and prepare for day two. Day two, 5 a.m., you'll wake up, get dressed, go to the lobby, eat, make sure you're on the 5.30 bus or the 6 a.m. bus, and you'll go to driver safety class and then to do log class and do some do the same thing you did on day one either at five or you can go back to the hotel um and you can go back to the hotel early sleep eat and relax by the way the wi-fi is very bad like not horrible but in some places in the motel the wi-fi literally sucks and doesn't work i'm in the 200 rooms and the Wi-Fi doesn't work at all so most of us have to come down to the lobby to use the Wi-Fi but I'm sure they're making effort to fix that eventually and they said it had something to do with Comcast it's not them I don't know now remember I told you if you're dealing with they I told you that you're dealing with people from all walks of life people that are respectful and care and those that think they know it all. During my orientation and load skirmish classes, I dealt with drivers who would get pissed off at me for asking questions. Yeah, that's right, simply asking questions. And yet those same people that got mad at me for asking questions turn around and ask some of the dumbest questions ever. A place like a reenactment in there. Also, I had some, some of the drivers cussed me out and threatened me and I just sat there taking it because A, no I'm not scared of it, no one, B, I don't want to go to jail for beating someone's face in and C, I don't want to lose this job opportunity. So I was pretty much yelled at and cussed at and picked on the whole time because pretty much yelled at and cussed at pretty much the whole time because I was either just a white and annoying or just because I was a white boy that pretty much they decided to pick on me. I like how those guys in class come at me saying white people are so racist yet I was picked on 
the whole time by every one of the guys that were black in the classes. To take it a step further, I, every time things happen to me, I stand there, I take it, and I get treated as if I don't matter. The whole time I've been here and all this kept happening to me, the only two people that stood up for me was the bus driver, Jason. He's also an instructor, a trainer, and he was he does driving tests for new drivers and cut into Western Express and also Mac in the load skirmit, which I'll post a picture here. Uh, Mac, she's awesome. She's stood up for me the whole time. I honestly think she's sick of hearing about all my problems, but she's been very helpful. Even though I know she's verbally expressed, she's tired of hearing from me. But I have no cell service, and under Wi-Fi, I can only text people with iPhones. And Mac has an iPhone, and she's been very helpful. Those two are the only ones who stood up for me the whole time. I'm very thankful for their kindness. But with that being said, i just thinking maybe I am just sticking out like a sore thumb. I don't know. I don't know why people do this to me all the time, but they do. And damn it, I am sick of it. Sometimes I wish I could le legally beat they ass without any form of punishment, but that is definitely not the case. I don't care who you are. You're white, green, orange, blue, black. I don't care what color you are. You show me respect, I'll show you respect. It doesn't matter where you're from, what you do, where you were born. You treat me good, I'll treat you good. But that's neither here nor there. So after five or six days, I finished my orientation and load scrimmit classes. I wish I was cool enough to talk to, I wish I was cool enough to gain the respect of people like I've seen others do. I'm just a big ass kid and I honestly don't know how to interact with people. If you need socks, toothbrushes, etc., there's one driver, he's a nice old man, and his name is James. He wears glasses, but he's the only one I've ever heard who's nice enough to take people to Walmart. And he's pretty cool. I've never gone to Walmart yet because I'm always broke. But the fact is, these are some of the options you have while you're here for orientation and training or load skirmit. Oh, and I wanted to say my favorite front desk clerk. And she's fun to talk to. I call her Sparkles because she's always blinging. <laughs> but no matter how annoying I am, she's always nice and willing to talk. That's why she's my favorite. And she's never been rude to me. So that's good. I'll put a picture over here. So that's it. This is Sparkles. <laughs> it is now 7.46 a.m. If you want to be on time for the bus, and on time for orientation, this is not what time you need to be up. You need to be up by five in order to eat your breakfast and get on the first bus at 5.30 or the second bus at six. There will be shuttles, but I will show you the lobby. Breakfast goes on till 9 a.m. here at the Hallmark. So here's the lobby. They have breakfast. So this are the main cereal, fruit, bagels, muffins, toast, waffles. I will tell you the daytime front desk people are not so friendly. They really are not that friendly. They really aren't. The nighttime girls are nice. I call them sparkles for a reason because they they got bling all over the place. They shine. They bling. I call them I call them sparkles. One girl don't mind hearing that, but the other girl she ain't amused by it at all. But 
I don't care. They shimmer, they shine, I call them sparkles. The night crew, front desk girls are nice. The other girls, during the daytime, not so much. Um, but this is the upstairs, and I'm in room, so you get your key out, so find it. You take your key card, and you slide it. Wait, what time is it? The past nine? Ah, oh, shoot. I gotta go get my card reprogrammed. It's past nine. Okay. So, yep. Yeah. Okay, so the interesting lobby. Pallets on the ceiling. One TV in the lobby. They have two restrooms. Wood. When you come in here, you're going to check in right here. That's when you get off the Greyhound. When you get off the Greyhound, you're going to come in this door. You're going to check in at this counter. You're going to stay in the hotel. Then you go into orientation the next day. This lobby where you eat breakfast every day. 7 a.m. Anywhere from 5 a.m. to 9 a.m. You're going to be in here at 5 a.m. Got to be in here at 5 a.m. to eat breakfast. The shuttle van at 5.30 or 6. This is the chicken counter. The deal. And after you eat breakfast, shuttle van. The bus in the morning is going to meet over here at 5.30. 5.30, the bus will be here in this spot at 5.30 or 6 a.m. Yeah, okay? that's how you do it. You gotta be out here at that time. You are not supposed to be parking there. The hotel doesn't like it. The owners of the parking lot doesn't like it. Do not park your truck over there because they will tow it away. Now, I'm do it anyways. But they seem to get away with it, but anyway. All right, everybody, we have Subway next to the hotel. We have Waffle House. There's La Perilla. La Perilla Mexican restaurant. So they also have Jack in a box. Not far from the hotel. We're in the shuttle you van. Can, you know, what you saw is what you saw. No, because now I can tell her this I don't is the main turn where we're going to look like that. Because all she has to do is walk around and move her hair. Uh, she just saved me about $4,000. Yeah. You know? You want to do the pot? You got nothing to do over here. You got the pot. Why do you want to the pot? Why do you want to stand there? Okay, so this is where everybody waits for the shuttle. That's the shuttle. So this here is the main building here. The main building for the main terminal. This is the main terminal office. Okay, so here we are walking into that is the seating trailer right there. Oh, well, it's a video. This is our Uber driver. Yep, we're headed back to the Hallmark. This little baby Blue Jay became my friend. Everybody thinks I'm his mama now. <laughs> what? I got no worms for him. Everybody thinks I'm his mama. I'm worried about this little guy.
Lane control, buddy. Lane control. <laughs>